Steve David in lane one in the Old Boy Oberto. Lane two, it's Greg Hopp in the red, white, and blue boat, the Marianne Travel. Lane three is a yellow boat. That's J.W. Myers. You see him coming under the bridge and off to his right. The world's most famous racing vehicle, Dave Vilwalk and Miss Budweiser. Greg Hopp looks like he's going to make a great start. If he's not early, he's going to be on time. And J.W. looks good in the yellow boat as they come by. A great start for J.W. Myers. But Dave Vilwalk has a lot of boat speed off to his right. Man, does he ever, but J.W. made a great start. Let's see if he can hang on to it going through the turn. Dave Vilwalk had a great head of steam, too. Let's see what happens. A tremendous look down on it from our O'Doul's eye in the sky, and look at the boat speed on the outside. Dave Vilwalk just has too much in the U1. He goes around J.W. Myers, Steve David, over on the inside, and the Oberto made a good turn, but he's back in third place as they start up the backstretch, and there goes Vilwalk one more time. It looked like a pretty clean first turn, and uh, we got uh, Steve David coming up in the end. Inside. Now oh. we get word that Steve David took oh. out one of the boys in the turn, so he'll be penalized for that. So the boat running third on the water is back a ways due to hitting a buoy. A tough break for Steve David and the old boy, Oberto. That's part of the problem on being on the inside. Darn it, you got to hang it on the hook and keep control of it. And I know with that being that rough out there, he must have just, just clipped it. Now this is a five-lap final heat. Dave Vilwalk has a nice lead here at the end of lap one, but he has to keep it on the water, keep it together. Anything on anybody's race boat can break. J.W. Myers doing a good job in second place now as he comes by. And all he's got to do is just hang in there. Now, speaking of stuff breaking, Budweiser's been breaking a few parts here and there, too, today that we hadn't really noticed. They're taking the hits themselves. So it's certainly a long ways to go here, but Dave Vilwalk has established a nice lead by a little more than a rooster tail in Miss Budweiser as he goes up the backstretch for the second time. It's back about two rooster tails to J.W. Myers in the U8. Then the old boy Oberto starts up the backstretch, but we believe he'll be back. What are the penalty for hitting a boy, Mark, about a lap? Yeah, that's a one-lap penalty. He's out, and then plus he's got to pay for it. So a little monetary fine there while you're at it. J.W. slowing down. The U8 has a problem. Now, it won't hurt that Steve David's going by him because he's down lap. Oh, J.W. is going to lose power. Oh, no, I don't know. what he, It uh, could be engine problems, could be a prop. You never know, but that's too bad because he had a great start. He was holding on to second place. That would have been great for National High Point. Now it's almost a half a lap between Dave Vilwalk, who is coming down the front straightaway to complete lap two. The second place boat is all the way back to the bright orange Elam Plus. He was one of the trailer boats, so we've had a lot of attrition here so far. I only see four boats running on the race course right now. Coming down the front straightaway. Oh, I'm sorry. Greg Hopp would be in second place. There you go. He was in a rooster tail, and I didn't see him. But Greg Hopp in the U100 coming by right now appears to be third place on the water behind Steve David. But the lap uh, penalty on the Alberto will put Hopp up into second place. Now, earlier, I saw the m -Corps go dead. He's floating down the river here somewhere. He's not even running either. So attrition is a big factor. And uh, I told the Elam guys, just hang in there. Terry Troxell was bummed because he's a trailer. But look at him. He's right up in there. And what, third place now? Out there running in clean water he's back so far but he's not about to overtake anybody so the second place boat is actually the blue one on the back straightaway we believe if we have the penalty correct Dave Vilwalk has run two and a half laps of the five here in Miss Budweiser carving a nice turn as we look up under the bridge he'll come down to finish lap three Steve David continues to run in second place on the water he will be down a lap after hitting a boy in the first turn and the actual second place boat at the apex of turn two with uh, Greg Hopp in the U100 just heading down to start finish now. Here comes Dave Vilwalk finishing another lap in Joe Little's Miss Budweiser, and he's on his way to the UIM APBA World Championship. Well, that'd be a great thing for the Budweiser uh, to win the World Championship, but I heard him compressor stall as they came by just a little bit. There's always a gremlins, and when you're out front leading, you really worry about things holding together for you. This will be a tremendous disappointment for Steve David and the Alberto crew because they have had a great weekend. A second-place finish here would have been a good, strong out outstanding weekend for them, but apparently a penalty is going to cost them second place after hitting a buoy in the first turn. Well, it's always tough when you hit a buoy like that, Steve, but you know what? If you're not out there trying hard, you know, it's just, it, you're just not racing, you know, and I know it's tough. Uh, it's like jumping the gun. You get so mad you jump the gun, but, you know, it's, it's just bad enough if you're way back, so it's one or the other. Just keep it together. Finish the race. We should mention the drivers are in radio contact with crewmen here on the shore. I'm sure Greg Hopp has been notified that he doesn't have to 
catch Steve David, and he certainly doesn't appear to be trying to do so. Right. That's a great thing from the old days. You know, we used to have no radios at all, so a lot of times you didn't know if you needed just to kind of back off and save your equipment. So nowadays I'm looking right down to my left here to see the spotters on the course for him, and it works out really well. Boy, Dave Vilwalk is running very rough. Compressor stalling. The boat hopping all over the river as he comes down the front straightaway, but still running pretty well. A white flag flew for Vilwalk. They gave a white flag to Steve David as he went by. Hopefully that was for the boat behind him if we have our scoring right. And that's Greg Hopp who comes by in second place. Yeah. One lap to go, Mark. All right, doing good, man. Hopefully they'll hang on. The Budweiser's got a long lead. Uh, Greg Hopp still sees him in his sights, and hopefully their radios are working to know that Greg can just stay there in second. Boy, you can hear the Budweiser compressor stalling all the way across the river. That boat is not running well, but it's probably running well enough to make another half a lap, Mark, and that's all he needs. That's all you need, but boy, it's, it's just the worst. You get down to the half a lap, a quarter a lap, and you have something like that going wrong, you're watching your temperature gauges, you never know if you can make it or not. Dave Vilwalk just trying to keep it running now. He's at the apex of his final turn. He'll turn it left and come under the bridge that separates Madison, Indiana from Kentucky across the river. He would normally accelerate up to about 195 miles an hour here as he cross start finish. But Mark, I don't think the red boat's running that well right now. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it. It's, it's compressor stalling, but he might just be cruising. He's got lots of, lots of room there. Looks like he's running well. You're right. He might have just been running easy because he comes easily across the start finish line. Dave Vilwalk takes the checkered flag and is is not only the champion of the Madison Regatta, which he has been before, he is now the 2004 APBM UIM World Champion. And that's a trophy that Dave Vilwalk will be very proud to have in the den back in Auburn, Washington, when he heads back home. So the win goes to Joe Little and his driver, Dave Vilwalk, the U1, the defending national champion, the defending champion here in Madison. And they will move on to Detroit and the Gold Cup, where they would like very much to put that trophy next to this one. The order of finish, in first place, Dave Vilwalk and Miss Budweiser. Second place went to Greg Hopp in the U100, Miss Marianne Travel, the apparent third place finisher. Steve David and the old boy Oberto dropped down to fourth place after a one lap penalty for hitting a buoy. The third place finisher is going to be one of the trailer boats, Terry Troxel in the U16 Miss Elam Plus. <laughs> hey man, survival, that's all it is. Look at your sweat, Where, where's his rag, man? Get this guy a rag, get him a drink of water anyway. Good job, Dave. Dave, geez. Don't ever let anybody know I actually sweat. <laughs> okay, we won't tell anybody. He's sweating right now like crazy. Uh, but that was a workout. Boy, that, that was rough, but the Bud guy set the boat up perfect. We changed the leading edges on it to make sure that we could keep the throttle all the way down. And I could. Trouble is, the driver's about to wear out. It's, that was tough getting through that water. I know. Been there, done that. I told the guys up there, man, these guys, five laps doing this. But, hey, world championship has got to be worth it. Hey, that's cool. That well, is Budweiser cool. Madison Regatta World Championship goes to Dave Vilwalk in Joe Little's Miss Budweiser. First of all, though, a report on Mike Weber. We know now what happened. The hatch under his feet, an escape hatch, which Mark knows so well, came out. He got a dose of the Ohio River from below. Now he has bumps, bruises, some strained muscles. He's going to be okay, but that hurts. You know, don't you? Oh, it hurts, and it's scary, too. It's right underneath your legs. You know, it's your escape hatch that you get out of if you're upside down. And when it comes open at those speeds, it's atrocious. It'll get you hard.